Hey there, greetings. How are you doing? I am Marina Orms, the founder of Astrology Heals at astrologyheals.com. And this is your Astro Vibe for Sunday, November 20th. Uh, we are here at this moment in time, just like every other moment in time, we have our own unique uh, things that are happening and things to be excited about, things to feel challenged by. And so life is all about how we meet those challenges. And this week we've got a new moon in Sagittarius coming up. So currently, um, as of November 20th, we've got uh, the, the moon waning and the moon cycle that began with the Scorpio new moon and solar eclipse coming to its end. We're in the final days as we uh, complete the work uh, that we began with that new moon in Scorpio toward uh, the middle, uh, let's see, it was around October 25th. So, um, so we, we, right, we, that culminated with our uh, full moon in uh, and lunar eclipse in Taurus um, on November 8th. And so, so there's much to reflect on as we complete this moon cycle. Uh, we're doing that work of integrating what's transpired, uh, coming to terms with what it means and how to move forward from here. So today I thought we'd focus on, uh, or I would uh, give you <laughs> three reasons why you should have hope for the future. And my intention is for that just to be a starting point. So my, these are my, my three reasons to have hope for the future. And then I want you to add to this list. So I'd love to hear in the comments as we talk about why and how to have hope, um, how that, uh, what your ideas are about how to do that and, uh, and to continue continue building the list. Uh, maybe we can build it together. You can also, of course, work on it for yourself uh, in a more personal way. So um, one of the reasons before I get to those three reasons why to have hope for the future, one of the reasons why this is such a potent topic is with the Sagittarius new moon coming up. Um, it will be on Wednesday. Um, the 23rd and uh it will have uh venus and mercury both in sagittarius that well they're in sagittarius currently and uh the sun going into sagittarius um looks like uh later in the day monday early tuesday so um so we're shifting to this sagittarius energy we've also got by the way a conjunction between mercury and venus in sagittarius um that's happening on monday the 21st so um so lots of sagittarian energy and sagittarius uh is the archer in the zodiac it's it's the um uh, that metaphor of shooting for the stars, of reaching for something that is beyond, of going beyond where you currently are. So, so it's the process of expansion and growth and exploration into new territories. So new territories can mean literally traveling and going uh going somewhere new going to a new country going somewhere um outside of your own backyard it can also mean metaphorically uh going to new territories in terms of your thinking in terms of exploring new ideas and different art forms and just exploring what is out there that can help to open your heart and mind and uh reaching for what goes beyond what you already know and understand to uh, expand your knowledge, your wisdom, your experiences. So that Sagittarius brings us to this point of, um, of planting our seeds, setting intentions for the next moon cycle on the new moon in Sagittarius on Wednesday um, that will uh, begin a cycle where we explore the ideas of of where we are putting our um our faith and our hope how what are we starting to reach out you know as we reach beyond the the barriers and the boundaries of what 
uh, has been our comfort zone to expand into places of, uh, of belief, of understanding, and, um, and, and the ways that we make meaning out of the experiences we have. So, so Sagittarius is an invitation to explore and expand our beliefs. And it's where we put our faith, our optimism, our hope, our trust. And so expanding into new places of hope. And of course, hope is something that we uh, think of as, uh, you know, is there hope? Is the world going to be okay? Am I going to be okay? What's going to happen? But of course, we are active agents in this process. And so hope is actually a choice. Hope is uh, our choice to believe in what we're creating. And that has to do with where we are right now. So uh, choice is always available to us in the present moment very much including the choice we have about our attitude. <laughs> so that's why we focus so much on how to make the reframes, positive reframes, because when you um, shift into what, uh, having an attitude of hope, shifting uh, and processing, working through feelings so that you can get to a place of feeling clear and feeling uh, hopeful, then you're actually actively helping to create the things that you're hoping will happen. <laughs> so we're more open or more receptive to positive things happening when we feel hopeful, when we believe in and can put our, uh, our faith and trust in what the future will bring. Um, so so uh, we're wrapping up the um, the Scorpio moon cycle, which has been just an incredible uh, time astrologically, energetically, in terms of who we are, what we're learning, what we're discovering. The Scorpio energy is the energy of transformation. And of course, this moon cycle that began with that Scorpio new moon and solar eclipse on October 25th, I think, I think that was the day, um, is, is just very potent and powerful. So deeper work on transformation, uh, accessing truth, uh, working out what is the truth and who has the power and power struggles and power dynamics with, which of course culminated in an election, very potent and historically significant election um, that, uh, that gave us some answers and opened the door to, to asking more. And so uh, this um, uh, the the struggles for power continue the work to be done on surfacing truth and living according to truth, living according to your personal truth and supporting um, power and personal empowerment in the world, the right that all human beings have to live their truth and to um, to be ex experiencing and living from their own place of power, not by having power over other people, but by having power from within, the power to um, be more love, to bring more love, to live more creatively and abundantly and, uh, and with hope. So we go from that, that Scorpio moon cycle energy to now the next phase, which is Sagittarius. And that Sagittarius moon cycle that begins this Wednesday is going to take us into uh, a different, uh, working on a different part of the whole that we're working on. So Sagittarius is going to, to be about how uh, we tell the story. Um, we, of course, still have Mars in Gemini, and we're working out that energy of narrative and information, where we're getting our information, who's telling us the information, and uh, how we are discerning uh, from the information that we hear, what to believe, what we want to live in alignment with. And uh, so the Sagittarius moon cycle is going to help us by asking us to get clear about what we believe, uh, what, uh, what um, star are we hitching our wagon to, 
And so how we tell that story, how the, uh, who has the narrative and um, what is important to us. So asking yourself, why, why am I doing this? Why am I here? What is the meaning and purpose of my life? And that's a big question. You may not have the answer, but even just asking that question can sometimes open the door to insights. Um, who, uh, who are you? What are you good at? Uh, how are you making a difference? And what do you care about? What is meaningful to you? What brings meaning to your life? So those kinds of questions are going to help you anchor in what it is that is going to give you hope and not just hope, but the ability to act on that hope and to actively uh, create the things that are important and expand the things that are meaningful to you and their presence in the world and um, being a participant in that shift in the collective consciousness, which the consciousness changes slowly. We were talking about that prior to the uh, lunar eclipse and the election, how consciousness needs to change in the mainstream. And so continuing to be part of that, continuing to participate in your own piece by helping your own consciousness to continue to be open and um, willing to learn and willing to uh, see what is going to be best for you. And then also uh, having conversations with people and um, showing up with a good attitude, showing up with a caring presence in a way that helps to heal some of the rifts and issues and challenges of our times. Okay, so you've been patient with me now. I know you're waiting for me to get to the three reasons why you should have hope. And what I'm going to talk about here again is only part of why we should have hope, right? There are many, many reasons and I want to hear yours. Um, but my first one that I have to share with you is um, because we know astrologically that there are cycles and there are cycles of energy. And even if you don't believe in astrology, you can see this happening. You can see that change happens over time. Winds blow one direction and then they blow the other direction. And that will happen in the shorter term, but also in the longer term. And some themes and um, issues from history and themes that we're still working on in our collective evolution, uh, the um, issues of slavery, for example, in this country and uh, racial justice and how that has evolved and how we've made progress, but we have still a very, very long way to go. And that is one example of an issue and a challenge that is is so complex and fraught with so many deep uh, traumas and uh, feelings and fears and all kinds of things um, that are going to need to be addressed as we work through that. So it's complicated. There are no easy answers. I say that as we go into that complexity, um, we, uh, we're, we be, we're doing that healing work and healing is complex. It's not, uh, it's not an easy answer and it doesn't always feel comfortable. So going into some of those places of confronting our own, uh, beliefs, the stories we've, uh, had, you know, society has, and that we've internalized and looking at those and confronting, um, some deeper truths. So anyway, that's just one example of how historically we've had this issue for a very long time and there have been change points at different uh, points in history and this is one. So uh, so cycles unfold, things change. Um, we have had the energy of uh, Pluto and Capricorn now since 2008 and that is asking us to foundationally and fundamentally transform uh, our systems, our structures, the ways we operate, the ways we get organized, and, um, and just really bring a ground change to how things work. Um, that is also, by the way, Capricorn, the... Um, the key, one of the main keywords for Capricorn is responsibility. And so we are all being asked to look at our responsibility in 
uh, the issues and challenges we have. Not that each of us or any of us by ourselves are going to fix anything, but that we each have a responsibility, which just means an ability to respond, that responsibility to uh, show up, to be willing to look at our own issues and our own selves and to show up to be a force uh, to support the outcomes we want and to support change in the direction of what we want and to make the most of this moment of breakdown uh, to, to reorganize, recreate, make things better and uh, stand in and align with the kind of world we want to live in. Okay, and um, uh, so cycles unfold, things change. Um, so we've had that Pluto in Capricorn. Uh, I've been talking a little bit about how that's going to change next year and into 2024. I will, I promise in the future, do a video just dedicated to that to really dive deep into it. It's a big topic and I want to give it the attention it deserves. Um, but we are going to be seeing some change and some shift in our um, in the background themes of what it is we're working on in the collective and what's happening um, in you know in the in the big picture of all of us together. Um, so Pluto's going to be shifting. Um, cycles are they just continue to unfold uh saturn has been in aquarius and saturn is going to go into pisces uranus has been in taurus and eventually uranus will go from taurus into gemini and neptune will go into aries so we've got changes to look forward to we've got energies that we are still the the outer planet energies that we're in right now are still the same that they've been for a few years now and in some cases many years um but but so my point is that we're still in it it's still working itself out and uh, we're going to be continuing to do that work and over the next course of the next few years we're going to start to see some shifts in the themes of what it is we're doing and how we're doing it um okay so that's number one reason why you should have hope is that things change cycles unfold we know that the energies are going to change we know they have been different in the past we know that we have uh, worked things out in certain ways in the past and that we also still have things to work on um, and that will continue to be the case but but who's to say that we can't solve some problems and we can't have some super creative approaches and innovative thought and um, uh, uh, shifts in consciousness, awakening to um, what we can create when we really put our minds to it. And some thinking outside the box that might come with uh, the Aquarian energies. Okay. So that's that's number one is that things change. Number two, uh, reason to have hope, and uh, I'm thinking about hope that we're going to move forward. Right, that's my perspective. Is that we are evolving and growing, and becoming uh, more uh, uh, better human beings, more loving, more caring, uh, more. Uh, uh, having higher consciousness and more of an ability to connect and solve higher level problems. Um, so number two is that uh, we our younger generations uh, are are coming of age and we, so we've got millennials. I'm Gen X. Um, so I this, you know, I'm kind of in that sort of between the boomers and the millennials, like we're kind of lost in there. but um, anyway, uh, <laughs> not going to go on a tangent. Anyway, the millennials and then um, uh, Gen Z, right? And Gen Z. So the millennials, um, I don't have off the top of my head, like what the exact years are, but we're, you know, one of the things that happened is in the early nineties, we had a Neptune Uranus conjunction. So people that were born uh, around Neptune, Sorry, yeah, Neptune Uranus <laughs> conjunction in Capricorn. And so people who were born at that time were born um at the at the beginning of this era where we have an internet. 
And what does that mean? What are the implications of that for society? How are we going to grapple with it? How do we how do we be human and learn what it means to be human and how we work together when we have uh, an internet, a social media? How do we grapple with those kinds of problems? Um, millennials, um, uh, Neptune and Uranus were in Capricorn in, in the uh, 90s and not all of the 90s, but but anyway, the early 90s and um, and the, and during that millennial generation and the, the energy of Capricorn, again, is the energy of responsibility and what are we going to do about it and what needs to change and how are we going to respond? Um, so so we've got that uh, the, the generation of people who are getting older now. Um, and then Gen Z, who is, as you've heard in the news, right, is just coming of age to vote and is overwhelmingly voting um, in favor of the things that are important to them, climate change, uh, women's rights, reproductive rights, um, uh, issues of so social justice, uh, marriage equality, LGBTQ issues. Uh, these are people who, to them, they don't even understand why why we have a world that these things aren't important to, right? How how could you as a <laughs> I mean, I hear this from my my kids' generation is like, how how did this happen? How could you even um like have allowed this? And so yeah, so we have the whole history of how we got where we are now, but we also have this future. Um, younger generation who think about things really differently. Um, I think I mentioned in a previous video that Gen Z has um, Uranus and Neptune in Aquarius, which is true. And I think I got it wrong, actually, that they have Pluto in Scorpio. That's more millennials. Um, Gen Z has Pluto in Sagittarius, which again is that theme of hope and optimism and um, what you believe in and putting your faith and belief in into things that um, you want to see and you want to grow and expand into. So really powerful energy um, in in terms of, uh, I think, uh, helping us to bring change and helping us to see the future and expand into that future and uh, and move forward without looking back. Um, okay. So that's uh, that's number two is the younger generations, uh, millennials, Gen Z and uh, Gen Z, uh, even more of them are going to be a voting age by 2024. Um, I think, uh, you know, if you're looking for a way to get involved <clears throat> politically, go register young voters, go to uh, college campuses and places where um, you can help get them registered and and. Uh, get excited and inspired about getting up involved politically because uh, because they're the future and they are the change. Okay, so that's two. Number one was things change, cycles unfold. Number two is we have the millennial and Gen Z generations um, uh, beginning to have more impact. And number three is because of you so that's another reason to have hope is because of you and who you are who you are being in the world what you are doing and how you are choosing hope because when you choose hope you're creating an environment and an atmosphere of possibility and that translates to your own personal life it translates to how you are being in the world and how you impact those around you. It translates to what you see as possible, um, right? It takes the blinders off. It lets you see things you couldn't see before because you were in um, a, a treadmill of the way of doing things. And so, so many more possibilities are always there, but when we open to them and um, take care of ourselves in ways that allow us to see what more of what's possible, um, then we are, we are the hope. And so your hope inspires you to create the future. It inspires others to create the future and we can do this together. So you're not alone. Um, others are choosing hope around you and uh, that's that's what 
life is about. It's about making connections. It's about co-creating. It's about getting excited about what we are doing and achieving and accomplishing together. So that's my number three reason for hope is that we're doing this and we will keep doing this. And uh, that's really the only way we can be defeated is if we stop, if we give up, if we say, oh, it's useless, then then we lose. But as long as we're not doing that, we've got this. It's that easy. All we have to do is keep going, keep being creative, keep taking care of ourselves, and keep being part of the future we want to see. All right. <laughs> Thank you for, for um, hanging in there with me. Um, remember that that consciousness does change over time. And uh, is it the, um, that quote about the arc of, of the moral universe uh, bends toward is long, but it bends toward justice. I don't know if Martin Luther King said that or was quote or quoted that anyway. Um, anyway, it's, it's true. It's like we are marching forward. We are evolving. Uh, evolution is on our side. Um, and there will be moments of challenge that, you know, if we didn't have that challenge, we might not be inspired to take the actions we need to take. So um, keep doing what feeds your soul and your heart, that spark of passion that you have to see things change and let yourself imagine the world you want to live in, write it out, describe it. Here is my vision of what the world will be and how the world is and step into that in this moment. How is it that way right now? How can you look around you and see, oh my gosh, this is happening and that's happening and and nature is beautiful and the sun is shining or whatever. So, um, so notice how the qualities you, you want that you hope for in the future are already here. Notice the ways that they are already here. Be grateful, have gratitude for the ways that they are already here and just open your heart to allowing them to expand and the opportunities will show up. You, um, you put the intention there out there and uh, and the doors open to say, oh, here's how that might work out or here's one way that could happen. And as long as you have that sort of attitude of openness and exploration and discovery, um, then then you just keep going and it's all there. And uh, so with this Sagittarius new moon, Sagittarius moon cycle coming up, um, keeping your, well, well, on the new moon, you want to set your intentions. So it's the perfect time, the beginning of the cycle to set your intentions, dream, vision, imagine the world you want to live in and, uh, and then get curious and open to how that's going to happen. And, uh, and, and, <laughs> take action, right? Do the things you need to do and respond in the ways you need to respond. Have the, uh, do the work that you're doing in your life, in your personal life, relationship work, creative work, um, the, the things that push you to confront the parts of yourself that are afraid, that bring up anxiety, that, um, uh, that, that talk you out of doing what you want to do, work with all that energy, right? It's not, you don't have to just ignore it. It's part of you, but, but have a relationship with it, have a dialogue with it. Why do you think I shouldn't do this thing that feels important to me and uh, explore where that belief is coming from? Ask yourself if there might be a different way of looking at it and keep going from there. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I look forward to reading your reasons for hope in the comments. Uh, I am excited to see what we can come up with together and how we can add to my, my three items and what else we've got. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. I do these videos um, 
every day, give you your, your daily uh, boost of self-care and insight into what the energy and the mood of the day has for you. So subscribing, make sure you don't miss anything. I've got a um, new playlist, uh, Astrology for Nurses, that is uh, going into the more technical aspect of how we um, do our healing process and how uh, as healers and uh, people who are in the caring professions can continue to support uh, people and, more fully in a more holistic, uh, supporting their holistic approaches. So uh, supporting our whole selves and our being, a whole self well-being, well-being in mind, body, spirit, and emotions. So check that out, Astrology for Nurses. It's for you, even if you're not a nurse, if you're interested in how astrology applies to a healing process. And I've also got a playlist on uh, your moon sign. So you can look up your moon sign there and see more about uh, how the moon impacts you and your uh, needs and how to take care of yourself. So we're here doing the unshakable uh, self-care, the astrology of unshakable self-care, and I'll be back and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.